Oh, all right. I was expecting it to be like way heavier. <laughs> all right, well, see me, we'll be out of right now. <laughs> Today I traveled to Marika Gouda Cheese, a nationally awarded cheese making farmstead in the heart of Wisconsin. I'll be getting shown how Marika makes her Gouda, a recipe she learned in her home country of Holland, which she brought to our amazing dairy state. This is a true Wisconsin farmstead, which means that the milk used for the cheese comes directly from the cows who live there. But first, what is Gouda Cheese? Gouda is a rich, creamy cheese native to the Netherlands. Because of its popularity, it quickly spread throughout the world where it can be found on most grocery stores today. Marika's plain cheese lineup consists of only four ingredients. Raw, unpasteurized milk, cultures, enzymes like rennet, and of course, salt. So follow me today and let's find out what makes this Wisconsin Gouda stand out from the rest. Alex? Nice to meet you. Walk me through what we're doing today. We're gonna take you through the full process of how we get our Gouda from our cow care, milking it and pumping it directly into our production room. We're gonna take you through the full production room, um, our aging process, the cut and wrap, because um, we control the process from start to finish here. I don't really know how cheese making works and I'm hoping that this will shed a little light on cheese Gouda specifically. We're gonna start off with going through the barn and she's gonna walk us through the cows and then yeah, get into the the factory and the cheese stuff, so. Ah, uh, yeah, it smells like my childhood. These are where all of our, our calves are kept. Each of our calves actually gets a name. Oh, so big. We have a couple different areas. You'll see the fans. Um, you hear that noise? That's one of our brushes. Um, they line up for those. They love them. Such good circulation in here. Yes. The vents up top, too. Um, the whole peak is open. So even if the sides are down, and that's actually to let the heat escape. So you experimented around with different nutrition for the, or diets for the cows too, huh? They are very particular about what they feed their cows and they are, it's very, very important to them that the cows are not only just happy, but they're super healthy and they're getting everything they need. They're not missing anything. This has like high protein, high energy feed. Um, it's actually called TMR, it's a total mix ratio. We have a nutritionist come in once, once a week um, and just kind of test our feed, test the cows, make sure they're getting, they're getting enough um, minerals, vitamins, that kind of thing. It smells delicious. Yeah. <laughs> that could almost be a trade it. secret in itself. Like yeah. just what you feed your just cows. You yeah. feed. There are three milking periods throughout the day, one at six, nine, and one. From here, the milk is put into a large tank where it is then sent to the production room to immediately begin the cheese making process. How do I look? Come along. So this machine right here is actually what keeps the temperature of our milk. So it actually gets piped in underground from our farm. Um, and then it goes through all these tubes and it actually keeps it within a certain temperature range so it's unpasteurized. Um, I think our cutoff is 150. If it gets hotter than that, it's considered pasteurized. Here you'll see it got pumped into the vat. So here, this is starting to separate the curds and the whey. So the curds is the solid part of milk. The whey is the liquid part of milk. You'll see it's starting to curd up. And so what's causing this, what causes the separation? Um, so we actually start to add enzymes and cultures and those help um, coagulate the milk. After this tank, it'll actually get pumped out and uh, the whey will get separated. So kind of what makes ours a little bit different and also kind of what makes Gouda different is we actually wash the curd in water. So we leave a little bit of the whey in there and we wash it twice in water. This is where the recipe comes in when you're when you're talking about a certain cheese is how long you leave the whey with it, how many times you wash it, the different washing mixture, like whether you're using, because a lot of cheesemakers actually use the whey to wash it. Um, we use the whey and water, so that gives ours a little bit of a different flavor profile. Ours is like really creamy, really rich, and I think it's because of that extra wash we give it. So it would be more acidic if it had just been the whey. Yeah. But, okay. So now they're starting the process of rinsing and re-rinsing. You'll see they're actually mixing in some of the ingredients now so they're done rinsing um, and now they're start they've already put in their cultures their enzymes um, and that's kind of some of that scent you're smelling okay um, so then you'll see some of the ingredients they're actually putting in so they're making a flavored gouda right now you know what flavor they're making right now truffle truffle, oh. truffle. Uh. once the curd is washed into the shape they're looking for the second tub is drained and ready for the curd to be transferred over from here the cheesemakers run their hands through to make sure there are no unwanted clumps which can form moisture pockets when the cheese is pressed and of course i had to get in on the action damn 
Okay. <laughs> thought he was yelling at me. <laughs> so we're just trying to keep them separated right now? Yeah, and they're just kind of feeling for clumps and chunks. Look at that, Stevie. It's like cottage cheese, you'd love this. <laughs> so what do you think, is he hired? No good? I'll put in my application process. <laughs> Such a satisfying feeling, I'm not gonna lie. Once all the curds are transferred over to the second tub, the weighing water gets drained for 20 minutes. These weights on the walls are then placed over the curd to press out even more moisture until it is all a solid block which then gets cut into cubes. Each batch of milk will create 45 cubes of 18 pound Gouda wheels. Lastly, to get the wheel shape, the cubes need to get placed into a circular form. Oh damn. Nice and hefty. I'm basically hired at this point, you know, so. <laughs> This is your audition. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Back breaking work over here, you know? All right. Now that the cheese blocks are in their forms, it's time to press the curds for two hours, which will shape them into the familiar cheese wheel shape, but also will drain out the excess whey and moisture. From here, the wheels are checked for internal temperature and pH levels before being flipped and transferred to what are called brining racks. Then the cheese will be immediately lifted and placed into a brine solution for 60 hours. The brine contains salt and lactic acid, which the cheese absorbs, aiding it in developing the classic Gouda flavors, as well as putting continued pressure against the wheel so it won't crumble or fall apart. Part. After this, the cheese is wheeled into the facility's aging room, which is closely monitored in temperature and humidity levels so the cheese can age properly. However, for the aging process to be successful, the wheels need to be coated with a special paracoating to help prevent mold and maintain a proper moisture level within the cheese. It's a paracoating, um, and it's kind of a labor-intensive, slow process because they can only do one side at a time. One coat at a time, and we do three coats. So, so they'll do the top, They'll put it on the shelf to dry and then flip it to the other side and they'll just keep going. So it takes like seven to ten days to do a and, and then do you count the age, start the aging like once that last coat is on or? Pretty sure the aging starts when it enters the room, correct? Right. Yeah. Planes, we actually sell them in the different age categories. So like our young is like a two to four months. So that is literally as fresh as you can possibly get. Like yeah. we can only start selling it at two months. You know, we have like four to six, uh, six to nine, um, nine to 12, 12 to 18, 18 to 24. So we have, and then we have a two year plus and that's what we sell our age brackets. Oh, and we're kind of going from freshly brushed. Clover. So I can pick one up? Yeah, just make sure it's fully coated. Yep, one of those is fine. All right. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. Oh, that's so cool. Stevie, come along now. It's super tight down here, so. Next, I got taken into a different room where the packing and packaging occurs. After taking turns holding the 18-pound wheels of heaven, Stevie and I observed how the processing works. The finished wheels are cored and cut into half horizontally. Then, with each half of the wheel, another machine cuts the pieces into 5-ounce slices where they're counted, weighed, and placed into bags for vacuum sealing. Once the cheese is sealed, it's placed into a steam bath that creates a perfect, airtight environment for the cheese to protect it. Then, the slices are tagged with labels and ready to be shipped out or displayed for purchasing and consumption. Speaking of which, this tour wouldn't be complete without a proper taste testing of Marika's award-winning Gouda. I sat down with Alex to taste an amazing cheese board and learn more about the contrasting flavors of some of the more popular cuts. So what do we got here? So we have a variety of uh, Chipotle. This is our Thorpe wine Gouda. We also have a variety of Plains. So I did bring out our Golden. We also have our Mature. That's our highest ranking award winner. So we can start with our Chipotle here. But Chipotle is a, a kind of an overwhelming or like intense flavor because it's super, super smoky. The temperature is just, typically when you have cheese, it's kind of straight from the fridge. So that it is how it's done flavors. wrong, yeah. yeah. So you're oh. actually supposed to serve it at room temperature. It allows the cheese to sweat a little bit and allows that creamy, fatty content to really 
um, hits your tongue right. Don't even, you can almost crush it with your tongue against the roof of your mouth. Like it's just like so creamy. <laughs> that adjective is gonna be used a lot. <laughs> I feel like the texture is gonna be It's similar. pretty similar with Basically. all of ours. That also comes comes back to just the way it's processed, the way it soaks up the salt, dry, you know, like when you're adding the salt, make sure it off, obviously dries it out a little bit different than when it's just soaking up salt. We're gonna do the Thorpe, the red wine Gouda. Okay, I'll just, I'll say it, I don't like it. Really? <laughs> Save this footage because everyone in there wants me to see me retry it, so here we go. <laughs> yeah, still not a fan. <laughs> it's funkier, is it not? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's what I would say. Like, and then that's because of the, the get, wine. You get that mm -hmm. uh, fermented. I I like it. Like yeah. I am. No, that's most people love it. You're an outlier. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so this one is our golden. So this is the one that's made with vegetable rennet instead of animal rennet. So you get that like parmesan-y feel to it almost. We do age our golden um, longer, so we don't sell it at like two to four months. It just doesn't have the right flavor profile for their cultures. I like the texture of it. Yes. You know? It gets a, I mean, it's creamy, but it's creamy. a different. Yeah, it's creamy. It's not crumbly, it's but it's, uh, yeah, you're like, it's kind of in between. This one is our mature. So like you said, you tried the young, which is like squeaky young, you know, mm -hmm. like super gushy. And this is just like a little bit off from that. I like them both for their own reasons though. But they have, yeah, they have very different flavors. They're mm -hmm. aged the same other than just the switch out of that rennet, it's the exact same ingredients, everything. That leaves this one. This is the reserve. So this is aged completely differently. Super, super old. We uniquely aged it to help keep the moisture in it with the crystallization. That hits like the side of the tongue really nicely. Oh, that's still so good. So this is a mustard dill, dill dip. dip. Wow. That is amazing. You start to think that it's gonna be like honey mustard and then, but the deal comes in and yeah. that's just surprises you. That's awesome. Well, Alex, thank you so much, honestly, for showing us, taking us around, taking the time to tell us your amazing process. You know, this was amazing. And thank you so much. Thank I appreciate you. it. Yeah. All right. As Stevie and I left with our bellies full, I have a newfound respect for cheesemakers and their craft. It truly is a work of art that gets honed in and perfected throughout the generations. Marika and her family of cheesemakers and lovers is what makes me love my home state of Wisconsin so much. There's endless passion for something we can all come together on while putting delicious Gouda cheese into our bodies, and I cannot wait to try future flavors. With that said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one.